When it comes to relationships and attracting the right partner in our life, what did you learn from your dad about how to do that, about picking the right partner, about, um, about maintaining a relationship? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so I'll be the first to admit, I went through a lot of years of failed relationships. Um, I, 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 I did not get into my perfect relationship until I was in my mid-50s. Um, so here's the interesting thing. At, at the seminars, I worked with my father for a good 30 years, and that was always one of the big questions at a seminar. How do I attract that ideal partner, my soulmate, whatever, whatever that may be? And dad always had an exercise, and I had never done it. Um, well, I was in my 50s, and I thought, <laughs> maybe there's something to this. Maybe I should try this, because obviously the way I was doing it wasn't working. And so I started out with uh, kind of a chart, and I in the, in the middle of the of the thing, I'd put a circle and I drew my ideal partner. And then I started to draw like starbursts out of it. And I would put all the qualities of a partner I was looking for in that. And then from there, I went and I opened up my computer and I just opened up a Word document. And I started writing, what would the ideal partner for me be like? What would her qualities be like? How would she be with people? Would she be kind? Uh, was she giving? Um, was she kind to me? You know, uh, just anything that would be in harmony with what you're looking for in the ideal partner. So I did that. Um, I figured, what the heck, it wasn't working the other way, so I would do exactly what he said at the seminar. And I created that Word document. And every morning, I opened it up, and I'd read it. And sometimes I'd add to it, or I'd take something out that maybe wasn't quite as important. And, and I just kept reading that every day. And sometimes in the morning, I'd write in my gratitude journal about how grateful I was that this woman was coming into my life. And, uh, and that was it. I was just open to it. I went on several dates, and they were first and only dates because for the first time in my life, I knew what was important to me, and I knew what I was looking for in a partner. I'd never been clear before. So if you're looking to attract somebody in your life, first get clear on what you're looking for. Don't just you know, be a, a shotgun out there and, and, you know, whatever comes in, comes in. Be specific over what you're looking for and, and be super specific. I mean, I was really specific. Well, I'm married now to, to a woman that is perfect for me. And when I looked at my Word document after we got together, she fit absolutely everything in that document except one thing. <laughs> she didn't live close to where I lived. She lived the other side of the continent. But I thought, you know what, that's not such a big deal. We can figure that one out. But everything else, she was, she was the perfect woman for me. And so I'm, I'm in a wonderful relationship because I was specific on what I was looking to bring into my life. I wasn't going to just let the whims of the world uh, come, into, you know, come into my being. And uh, so that's, that's something that I did that Dad had always taught that, uh, quite frankly, I didn't learn early on. Um, or thought maybe it was a little crazy. I didn't worry about it. But, uh, you know, I did that in my 50s and it worked like a charm. It worked like a charm. Isn't, isn't it, um, I heard a story. Isn't it, isn't it true that he would used to sit you guys in the same table at a seminar when you were just friends? Isn't that true that he used to do that? <laughs> wow, you have done your research. Yeah, so here's the interesting thing is Corey worked in the company. And... Um, I think dad saw it before we saw it, which is kind of interesting. And yes, he, um, you know, he'd be from the stage whenever he needed anything, you know, there's bright lights coming at you. So he couldn't see all the way into the back of the audience. And most of the time the staff were sitting in the back of the room. Well, he decided that he wanted a table just to the left of the, or to the right of the stage, if you're facing the stage, but to the left of him, that was uh, close to the front. So it was out of the lights that he could see. And he wanted myself and he wanted Corey there. He said that way he's got a couple of people that would hold him accountable if he promised something or if he needed something. And um, and quite frankly, yeah, that was kind of the start. So Corey and I, we would, you know, obviously we got chatting and then we, we'd be at events and uh, we'd go out for walks in the morning and really got to know each other. And uh, here we are. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> he often saw things before other people did. <laughs>